Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, and thank you to the Jordanian Chemical Process Safety Engineering Society for allowing me to share this simple but hopefully effective concept. So what I'd like to share with you is an approach um, really targeting process safety from the bottom up and to help exploit the knowledge that we already have in a, a low tech um, but high high reach or, or wide reach um, approach. So starting off with what Shaquille has, has uh, recognized and Trish has recognized, it's sad that in the 21st year of the 21st century, we are still experiencing process safety incidents. We are still experiencing um, casualties. And, and Trevor Kletz said in his book, uh, you know, things are still going wrong. Things are still going wrong today. And we have better technology, we have bigger data, but we are still experiencing these tragedies. So are we perhaps focusing on the wrong protection measures? Are we perhaps focusing on the wrong people when we are trying to improve our process safety performance? We have many great institutions, many great initiatives from Trish at the ICME Safety Centre, Shaquille at the CCPS, Thies at the European Process Safety Centre, uh, Lee at the Energy Institute. So we have uh, collateral, we have material, we have the knowledge, but sometimes that knowledge doesn't reach the people who are potentially impacted or, or potentially contributing to these incidents. If you look at the, the CSB investigations, over 100 investigations, sadly over 200 fatalities, around 40% of those casualties were outside the organization, either contractors or other third parties. That doesn't mean they were to blame, not at all, but it's still a significant portion that may fall outside these familiar strategies. So what we need to do is to try and engage the workforce, the ones who are actually on the front line. And now we look at new ideas like gamification, try to make learning more powerful, more effective, more interesting. But gamification has its challenges. Um, many people are don't have the time. Um, you're not able to... Um, exploit these um, ideas on the plant because perhaps you need uh, tablets or, or other components. So gamification is not always as effective as it could be. But now if we could focus on micro learning, so these third parties, other stakeholders who don't have the time, give them short bursts of information or knowledge to help them acquire and retain key um, learning. So what we're aiming to do with the process safety card is to put the knowledge into the right hands, the, the hands of the people, as I said, who may contribute to or be impacted by these loss of containment. To use simple principles, simple visual concepts, they can remember events, they can recognize the causes or threats that, that um, initiate those events. Really importantly, to respect the barriers that are put in place to prevent or mitigate those events and report any concerns that they experience. The stakeholder or the, the, the duty holder, owner, operator has an obligation and expectation to take that feedback from the front line and respond to it. And really critically to, to make amends, to try and recover the protection as quickly as possible. Because without that, that protection, then the facility, the assets, the personnel are vulnerable. So we've developed these simple playing cards. So it's a, a handy, familiar deck of cards. Um, Currently, there are 52 separate um, loss of containment events, and they're easily accessible to a, a wide community of personnel. 
but really at the, the core of these cards is knowing your enemy. Um, hazards are not the enemy. If you're um, operating a hydrocarbon facility or a power station, you need your materials to be combustible. That's a hazard that's part of your business, but you control or you contain that hazard. What is your enemy is loss of containment. And we have to remind, we have to inform everyone of the enemy. So we've taken the 52 cards, we've split them into four possible uh, suits. So we have um, degradation, where it indicates failure within the design conditions, um, discharge, um, an open route to atmosphere, for example, damage, external impact, um, for example, some NATEC event, and finally, deviation going beyond the um, design envelope. And the cards are aimed to capture um, curiosity, to make people interested in what can go wrong. And you'll see here that we, we've represented these in a familiar playing card format. But if your culture or your um, company forbids such gambling or such gaming, we can remove these to make them look much simpler uh, and much more acceptable. And I would like to thank uh, Amro Kash, Jakob Banataha, and Dr. Sami for helping with the Arabic translation. So you'll see here we can make cards in a variety of uh, familiar languages um, to suit the audience, to suit the, the jurisdiction. So how might the cards be used in practice? So starting off with operational opportunities, you could, if you're allowed to, play games, just regular games with the cards. So you've got this passive learning opportunity to acquire that knowledge simply by playing the cards that you recognize. We could use them for toolbox talks, take a card and one or everyone talks about their experience of the card that's been dealt, whether it's dropped objects or vehicle collisions, flooding, lightning strikes, for example. You could use it for a quiz. Uh, so draw a card and get people to, to identify that event. Um, so make sure that they're fully understanding the um, hazards. Use them as hazard reminders. You could attach the cards to uh, work permits. So it highlights the potential hazards that may be involved when carrying out that work. They could be used for hazard spotting or surveys. So take the cards around the site with you and then label the, um, the locations or, or the potential locations where you have concerns about vulnerability. And they could also be used for um, simply introducing to visitors uh, or project or maintenance personnel. Very simple, very handy, uh, very inexpensive. And they can also be used for online interaction. So now we are under COVID restrictions. Uh, even if you're not isolated, if you've got remote operations, you can use the cards online via digital uh, tables. The cards aren't just limited to um, frontline personnel or, or operations personnel. There are opportunities to engage um, people further up the, uh, the organization. So they could be used to, for example, start discussions uh, for meetings used for safety moments. Um, they could be used to validate or sense check HAZOPs or PHAs. So every time a deviation is discussed, that card goes on the table. At the end of the, the study, the cards that are left are the ones that are either not relevant or the cards that need to be discussed. They could be used as dashboards, so categorizing your incidents by loss of containment type or card. We could tie the cards to familiar industry or company incidents. So here we have the, the CSB uh, investigations and you'll see how many of these are related to internal corrosion, for example. 
They could be used for um, sort of hazard screening or hazard potential. Each card has a value. Ace is 11, King, Queen, Jack is 10. So the more cards and the greater the score on the cards, then the greater the uh, potential for um, hazards. They could be used for campaigns. Um, so um, this week we're going to talk about um, uh, over temperature, for example. Next week we're going to talk about um, low pressure. So using them as a visual aid at any point within the organization. And again, similarly to the, the operational um, online um, card games, they can be used for um, digital or, or virtual whiteboards so you can exchange knowledge um, remotely. So it's not just limited to physically handing out cards during a meeting, you can do that um, online as well. So the cards themselves are creating that curiosity, creating that interest, but really the, the value starts to come with fully understanding each scenario. So after the Bunsfield incident, the health and safety executive inquiry through these three challenges to all the duty holders, do you understand what can go wrong? Do you know what your systems are to prevent this from happening? And do you have the information to assure you that they are working effectively? So what the, the bow ties do is it allows you to address those first two questions. It also allows you to address the third question, but in this instance, we're tackling the understanding and the knowledge, what can go wrong, what systems are there in place to prevent it from happening. So for each card, there's a one page bow tie scenario, which has got typical causes, typical controls, uh, typical vulnerabilities. These can be posted online or they can be posted outside places of work, meeting rooms, workshops, etc. The key message from the bow tie is that there are barriers in place, but these barriers are imperfect. They will deteriorate and you must recognize these degradation factors and address how you sustain the, the, the performance of your human barriers your, your um, active hardware barriers. So this is where the real value lies, highlighting, emphasizing, communicating, sharing these degradations and how do you reinforce, remind, inform people that these barriers are imperfect. You can also use the cards for different um, formats or different styles. So for example, ignition sources, process safety management, human factors, um, or safety data sheets. These are all just examples using the same familiar um, platform. So in summary, this is not a game. We see this as a knowledge exchange tool, sharing the knowledge between the management and the operations from the top floor to the shop floor, from the boardroom to the control room in both directions. Sharing the learning using familiar images and recognizable local languages. It's not a new strategy. This is not replacing all the, the good work that the, the IKME, the CCPS, the Energy Institute have done. This is helping you deliver your strategy, whether it be process safety or asset integrity. Fundamentally, it's protecting the protection, the hardware and humans that, that look after you. And it can be adapted to suit various um, operations anywhere where loss of control or containment of energy or materials is involved. So in summary, the cards increase the awareness, the bow ties enhance the understanding, the barriers and the bow ties drive that vigilance, that respect, and that vigilance enhances the process and asset integrity. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions now or later. The knowledge is out there. This is aimed at getting that knowledge to the right people as quickly and effectively as possible.